I'm Jackie Gulbis from the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute in Australia and this is Oliver Clark and today we're going to tell you about some recent work from our lab showing that the intracellular assembly of curved potassium channels has a role in regulating conduction. The flow of potassium across cell membranes is mediated by highly specialised molecular pores. These are known as potassium channels and they have a central permeation pathway at the common interface of four constituent subunits. Because electrical current must be controlled, potassium channels use molecular gates to switch conduction on and off in response to physiological signals. The nature of the gates and gating process has not been ascertained, other than that they must lower the energetic barrier to ion permeation. We are studying how the pore interchanges between conductive and non-conductive states and how the process is regulated. In this study, we've used structural biology to interrogate the gating process, determining multiple crystal structures of one type of potassium channel from the inward rectifier family. This has enabled us to pinpoint areas of the molecular scaffold that systematically undergo localised transitions and to correlate changes in different regions of the structure. The key result to come out of this study is that reorientation of the cytoplasmic assembly is coupled to inactivation of the selectivity filter, suggesting a means by which ligand-dependent gating can directly regulate the status of the selectivity filter without changes at the intracellular bundle crossing. The conserved pore has three helices within the membrane and a signature region called the selectivity filter that's common to all potassium channels. There are many families of potassium channels, and they are distinguished by regulatory domains that allow them to respond to specific molecular or physiological signals. Kerr channels are ligand gated and have the defining characteristic that they control the directionality of ion flux. Using the simple mechanism of co-opting intracellular polyvalent cations to block the pore from the inside, thereby stemming potassium efflux in much the same manner as a molecular diode. Our major finding is a direct correlation between the ion configuration in the selectivity filter and the orientation of the cytoplasmic assembly. Rotation of the entire intracellular assembly relative to the pore by 23 degrees locks the filter in an inactivated three ion configuration. Whereas in the absence of divalent ions or blockers, the non-twisted structures have a conductive configuration in the selectivity filter. The combination of structural and functional data we present in this issue shows that reorientation of the intracellular domains is coupled to the selectivity filter. While perturbation at the bundle crossing has been shown to cause channel inactivation, we show that the selectivity filter can switch between conducting and non-conducting configurations without displacement of the inner helices or widening of the helix bundle crossing. This suggests a more universal role for the selectivity filter in gating than has previously been appreciated. Our data also shows a reorganisation of the subunit boundaries and this is correlated with different orientation of the domains. For convenience, we've turned the alternative arrangements latched and unlatched. This movie interpolates between the C-alpha coordinates of two superimposed structures, one with all four interfaces in a latched arrangement and the other with all four unlatched. You can see that as the subunits rotate outward, a beta hairpin from the amino terminus of the channel forms across the interface. Why is this important? The orientation changes are intrinsically linked to the process of current rectification. The picture here shows wireframe models of two structures with the positions of bound spermine indicated by yellow and blue spheres. On the left, two spermines oriented approximately parallel to the molecular axis are located within the walls of the intracellular assembly. This occurs only at latched interfaces. On the right, an axial spermine penetrates the conduction pore as far as is possible. This close-up of the molecular surface shows why spermine binds only at latched interfaces. Domain reorientation diminishes the binding pocket such that binding is no longer favoured after unlatching. By removing the front subunit of the tetramer, this movie shows the spermine bound inside the wall of the assembly. As the domains reorient, the spermine is displaced and under depolarizing conditions would move into the axial transmembrane site. The study presented here indicates that interdependent gates control conduction in Kerr channels. It all provides evidence of selectivity filter gating distinct from C-type inactivation and governed by global conformational changes.